All right, now I want to turn to an issue that I actually think is important. You might think, oh, you do big issues and you talk to people overseas and talk about the economy. I want to talk about pets and I want to talk about animals and I want to talk about Christmas. Um, there is, I guess, the idea of the puppy for Christmas or the kitten for Christmas and the idea of going away on holiday. Um has been an issue for years because what happens is how long does a puppy stay cute? How long does a kitten... Do you get the kitten spayed so you don't have more kittens? And when you go on holiday, some people literally... And it used to be a thing. I don't know if it still is. When I was a young journalist, uh, people would leave their animals, mistreat their animals, leave their animals to starve, in some cases kill their pets, or take their pets on holiday and not take good enough care of them, leaving them in the hot car when you go and do the shopping, the dog and stuff like that. So I thought, let, let's have a talk about pets and animals. Um, and who better to do so to someone who works at the front line with it? Uh, the SPCA's Hawke's Bay Area Manager, Bruce Wills. Bruce, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. All right. Is... And it used to be, and I'm thinking back to my younger days, 25, 30 years ago, this really was an issue around Christmas time. And also post-Christmas, when people had got kids, their pets that really weren't going to work out or work in their lifestyle. Is this a busy time of year for you guys? Yes, it's a very busy time of year. And, and particularly at the moment, I was, I was just uh, running the numbers yesterday and uh, we are up about 15% uh, in-care animals that, uh, for the same time last year. We've got about 4,500 in-care at the moment um, compared to about 3,800 the same time last year. So it's pretty concerning. Um, we've had we've been done a lot of work in the communities to bring the numbers down and, and um, I think the, this is just the first sign of the, the cost of living issues biting and mm. fewer people getting their animals de -sex. So. The, those numbers are worrying, and then our centres are already bulging. So, um, yeah, so we we, uh, we do want to get them out into homes, though, and, and as long as that the decision's an appropriate one, it's a, it's can, it can be a good thing. Um, it, it's where the, 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 the right planning has been made, but we have many, many families adopt over this period, and, you know, they, they do so responsibly, and, and especially if they come through the likes of the SPCA, you go through an application process and the, and the pertinent questions are asked, and generally it's very successful. All right, so that's the rehoming, and I must admit I'm looking at getting another dog, and I'm wondering if I do the old rescue dog thing through the SPCA, if that isn't the best thing, uh, best thing to do. What are the sort of things that a family, and there's such an emotional thing, the idea of the puppy or, 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 or you know, the kitten, is tugs at the heartstrings so much. What are the, the basic practical considerations that a parent or a family need to make before they get a pet, like a cat or a dog, most common pets we have? Well, for Christmas, sometimes the biggest, the, the first consideration is, is, is Christmas Day the, the appropriate day to be getting a, a new family member, but it's, it can be often be a you know large family gatherings chaotic there's the kids have got other distractions and and it's probably not the best time to actually introduce a new pet um so sometimes it's a good idea just to delay it and and perhaps one of the presents be something relating to the pet so that the indicating that the the pet may be coming but and and often that's uh what families do they actually wait till they've, they've gone on their holiday and then but the 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 kids know that the pet is coming and, and it's probably a sensible way to go about it because um, it can be you know it's stressful for a, a new pet in the family um, so that's probably one of the the first things and of course um, there's the normal considerations that that you need to have when when taking on an animal that you're going to have for the next 10 to 20 years um, you know the costs obviously the and they are going up um, Desexing. I mean, if you get an animal from the SPCA, generally they are already desexed. Um, but one of the biggest issues we have is, is people just not getting them, uh, animals getting them free um, through contacts, family members, Facebook, yeah. but but then not getting them desexed in a timely fashion. And, and you know, you get a kitten at um, 
Christmas time, and it can be popping out its own kittens by March. So yeah, and then the, clock, the problem the snowballs, ticking. Bruce, doesn't it? Hey, look, uh, well, exactly. Uh, this just occurred to me. Shouldn't we live in a world, given the problem, and given the problems that undersexed animals or fertile animals can cause and pets can cause? Shouldn't we have, and I hate to say this because I'm not an authoritarian, a law that says unless you're a breeder, you're not allowed to own a de, uh, an undesexed cat or dog of either sex? Wouldn't that be the solution? Well, we totally agree that there needs to be some more um, legislation around the control and, and management of particularly cats, but, but and, and certainly dogs as well. Um, and uh, they have, they, they were, there was a group called the New Zealand Cat Management Strategy Group, which formed in 2016, and produced a wonderful paper at a great extent a and very detailed um, about the recommendations for the management of cats in New Zealand. And it died on the vine. And, and I, I understand it's been resurrected at the moment, but... That we, and, and one of the central uh, recommendations was that there was uh, the, it, the, the, it acknowledged the gap of, the, of central legislation and um, informing um, local local bodies to be able to do, actually help us in this work because the SPCA can't do this by ourselves. It's no. too big and we, we simply don't have the resources. So it is a collaborative thing and certainly legislation is an absolute must to make it happen. Okay, uh, interesting thought. Um, all right, so that's the getting the pet or the giving of the pet, and I think you make an excellent point. Maybe Christmas Day isn't the best day, the most normal day to integrate a new member of your family, which is what a good pet is, particularly a dog. Not that I'm anti-cat very much. Um, <laughs> the other thing is going, going on holiday. Uh, and as I said, uh, as a younger reporter, we used to get horrific stories of people killing their pets or leaving their pets untended for. Is that the problem it used to be, or are people more understanding these days? Well, I think people are, are generally um, more onto it with, with um, that sort of thing. Um, however, you know, we, we, it is a busy time for our inspectors, and, um, and, and in general, I think that the levels of neglect appear to be rising. Um, we, as I say, the, the numbers coming into our centres have risen you know, significantly, and the biggest driver of that has been animals being seized by our inspectors, which indicates that the levels of um, neglect uh, and cruelty have uh, are rising. Um, so that is of concern, and um, certainly um, animals being uh, literally abandoned in their own backyards is a is a reality that we are increasingly facing. That that's that's for certain. All right, there are solutions. There are catteries, there are doggeries or, or kennels you can, you can send your pets to. But this costs money, and I think you made an interesting point earlier on. We're heading for recession, and times are tough for average New Zealand families. And I guess the old pet is at the bottom of the food chain, isn't it? When it comes to, to you know, saving a bit of money or not putting as much money into something. Yes, um, and our, the, our stats seems to be indicating that that is the case in terms of, you know, the, that we're getting a lot more owner surrenders coming into the centres as well with people just saying oh, we, can, oh, we can no longer afford, you know, yeah. anim our animals. Um, and also, again, not um, being able to afford the desexing, which leaves them with a litter of animals, which, again, they bring to us going, we can't handle, you know, dealing with, yeah. the, with the, this litter. So it's, um, it's a big issue. I mean... The, the cost of um, desexing um, a dog now, you know, it, it can be well over five hundred dollars now for a, for a wow. bigger dog, and you know, and a, re and a really big dog can be uh, you know eight hundred dollars or so. So that's getting you know beyond the means of, of, a lot of many people. people. So, so it's a real and, consideration and, when you look at getting a pet. You have to actually take into account the financial cost of having a pet and also along with whether or not you have a lifestyle that will allow you to care for that pet and give it the attention it needs. It's a huge calculation. It is a huge cal calculation and, and, um, 
and you always need to bear in mind that the um, you know a, a gift for the children that the um, they're, they're probably unlikely to contribute to the costs or take it for a walk probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's often a nice idea, but in in reality, and I must admit, as I look at having a dog, I am literally thinking, what is my life expectancy? How long might might a dog live? Where will I be at my in my life when my, that dog is at a certain stage of its life? Because I think you do have to plan years out for a pet um, and, and make those sort of, and sometimes quite cold or calculated uh, decisions as to how things are going to work out. On to what people should do, and I, I shamefacedly admit uh, that I once had an argument with a woman in a car park in Taupo when I had left my dog to pop into the shops and I took I think 10 minutes instead of five, and I came back, and this woman was quite rightly lambasting me for having my dog in the back of the car with no water, windows down, but on a hot day. Um, there's going to be a lot of that over summer. Uh, what should people do when they see an animal that is in distress or that isn't being treated well? How do we handle that? Yeah, it's a real tricky one because um, sometimes the animal can be perfectly fine and, and, and other times they, it, it, they can be in genuine distress and it's sometimes hard to, for, for the layperson to tell the difference. And, um, and obviously um, it, it, you, you can uh, contact the SPCA and, and inspectors can attend, but there can be you know, uh, obviously a delay for, people, for the inspectors to get there um, and uh, the police can attend as well if it, if it gets to that point. But um, often um, the best thing we recommend is, is to um, go into the, the, if it's an obvious where the, the car is parked and, and they're going into a certain shop, to go in and the, the um, shop often we can put an announcement out and that, that they're quite accommodating for that. Um, and uh, people can just um, just wait around to see if the owner returns because often they will return within a few minutes. But um, if there's genuine concern, then um, contact the SPCA or contact the police and, and, um, and they will come and um, uh, get the dog out if, if, if need be. It is, it, we, we run around doing so many dogs and cars and it's great that the awareness is out there now it, because I think it's a lot more than it used to be but it creates massive work for us over the summer periods. And we understand that the people, the people that are taking their dogs out and about, they're often the, 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 the people that love their dogs the most. And they're often not necessarily doing the wrong thing, but when they are, it's of high consequence. So it, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a real hard one. And I guess the other thing too, Bruce, a lot of people do, and I was for many years with my uh, beloved Pax, he, he went everywhere with me, in the holidays, in the back of the rangey, um, and if you invited me over or said pop in and see us, you knew the dog was coming with me. The other thing is, um, in that situation, a lot of pets, dogs in particular, are going to be out of their familiar surroundings and in places with a lot of people. So it's important, I guess, that you follow the rules of keeping your animals under control in public places and where they do their business. You carry the plastic bag with you, and it's all pretty standard stuff but it can go by the way by the way you know when you're on holiday and trying to relax yeah um don't take your cat for a walk in a national park like these um that's right that recently. was amazing that wasn't that story that was the uh, probably, probably, stupidity story of the year uh, yeah. or the was it some time ago someone took a ferret over to great barrier or yeah, yeah yeah people do some some odd things um but yeah, all, all those things um, you need to take, take into account. Um, one of the uh, 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 most people I know get um, house sitters in that actually specialise in looking after pets, and it's a great yeah. option. Yeah, the, the pet remains in their house; they're comfortable there. They don't; they're far less stressed. And you get someone that is giving them one-on-one -on -one attention. Yeah, um, it's a great holiday job, home, isn't it? So. It's a great holiday job. Brilliant, you know, yeah. uh, to to, yeah. to be a pet minder. Bruce, I know you people are going to be interesting. I think what the SPCA does and always has done is fantastic work. Um, and I wish you all the best uh, for the festive season. And I actually hope you're not too busy. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Cheers. That is Bruce Willis.
SBCA Hawks Bay area. Uh, uh, Will, sorry, Will's Bruce Willis. I was thinking of Die Hard because it's Christmas. Um, but he's the SPCA's Hawks Bay area manager, and that is a good chat. Think about plan, plan for your pets, and plan for having pets. Um, you must do that. Uh, so I appreciate, and you've got to appreciate the work the SPCA do. Um, they are the people to ring if you see an animal being abused or in distress or stuck in a hot car. I still remember that day. I was so embarrassed. I felt so, I felt like such a bad dad. I really did. And this woman, she wasn't eating, and she made me feel bad, and quite rightly so, madam. It was years ago, but it's still, I can remember where I was parked and what I was buying and the whole thing, and the look on Paxi. Ah, oh, look what you've done now. Look the trouble you've got yourself into. I wasn't going to say anything, but this nice lady's having given you a go. All right, um, if you've got any views, what are you doing with your pets this summer? Um, if you're on holiday, you're going to take the dog with you? Taking your cat on holiday, that's not on. But I've also got to say, cats are just a bane on New Zealand. They kill birds, they're feral. They go feral. They get shot in Collingwood, someone's just told me. Jolly good, jolly good. Um, Sean, I have a chockey lab looking for com some companionship over Christmas if you are keen. Good for long walks on promenades, big brown eyes, tummy to match. Oh, well, Roger, is that just a temporary thing with your chocolate lab? Or is it genuine? Uh, mad cat ladies, cover your ears, this text says. The problem of wild cats is in rural areas. Cats are shot in Collingwood due to the destruction of native birds. Kittens are also dumped regularly on our family farm. That is in the Waikato. That is so sad. Get your animals de-sexed unless you have plans and, and you're qualified to breed them. Yes, Hugh, they should de-sex some two-legged animals. Oh, that's a bit violent, isn't it? I might get on the terrorism watch list for that. 